Oh, she she's over at Rock City Brewing. I know it's a wonderful union, if you will, and yeah. she's uh, there, and she gets. Uh, I won't say she's sampling the fruits of their labor, but she's at least getting a chance to look at it, right, Hannah? That's exactly right. I'm live here at Rock Brewing. I'm at the east end of downtown Rochester, and that's right. Take engineering students, a love of beer, and then put mom in the mix. She bought them a home brewing kit. And this is what it's turned into. I'm here with Chris Benelli. How are you? Oh, my God, Chris. First of all, you started brewing beer at home. How do you even know how to do something like that? You know, it, it's, it's quite easy to start off as a home brewer. Um, a lot of people get into it. It's a great hobby, um, great thing to do on the weekend. And some people take it a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my friend John and I, we just got into it. Uh, we ultimately ended up taking over, I think, about eight rooms in my parents' house, at which point they were like, you need to get out of here. And so we said, well, why don't we start a brewery? Um, you know, economics backgrounds for both John and I. So we thought about it and looked at the business, looked at how it was growing, and we said, let's do this. And he also has an MBA, so you know a little bit about business. And we said, knock on wood, things are going well so far. Things are going well. But this is really the base of what you guys do. You make beer. So you're going to show us how it actually works. Yeah. We've been, I've been looking at this all morning thinking, okay, it kind of looks like rabbit food. But you tell like me rabbit. it is not rabbit food. It is explain, not. Explain mm -hmm. sort of the process, and we're going to show... Uh, with the machines as well. Sounds great. So, what we have are three of the four basic ingredients of brewing. Um, okay. Ultimately, you need water, barley, hops, and the one thing we don't have here is yeast. Okay. And essentially, you combine these three, these four things to create beer. Okay. And uh, so, how we start is we take water yep. and we put it into our hot, hot lotter ton and we put it and heat it up to about 165 to 170 degrees, trying mm -hmm. to get that heat built up so that we can then transfer that water into our mash tun. This is the point where we put our cracked barley, we'll dump it into here, and we'll fill this up, usually with anywhere from 60 to like 80 pounds worth of different uh, barley, usually starting off with a simple base malt. That's essentially something just that you're trying to get the simple sugars from, to more complex malts like you have in here Eight where we have... Lines our oat malt up here, we have uh, crystal, some caram caramel, uh, and then our really dark uh, chocolate roast malts that really add different complexities, color, sweetness, roast is that to it. What, is that what makes the beer darker and lighter? That is, yeah, that's where you get all the coloration from the beer, which okay. ranges from anywhere from that really pale, you know, see-through water yeah. that some beer breweries do all the way up to you know your dark stouts that are just right. thick and heavy from there we'll transfer over to our boil kettle and at okay. this point we're trying to heat up the water to about 210 degrees really active vigorous boil and the real main reason for that is we want to be able to break down what we said earlier that is not rabbit food this is the hops <laughs> and what yeah. we're trying to do is break down this to get the alpha acids out of it okay essentially what that is it's what makes the bittering in the beer. So we'll add it in earlier in the beer to cause more of a bittering effect. Later in the beer to add that floral. So you smell that? Oh, so yum. little earthy, grassy, but you yeah. can already smell some of the bitterness. And I wouldn't in eat it. one of those alone. Don't and eat say, these. Don't do it. Yeah. Some places <laughs> will try to trick people on tour to oh, eat this. Oh, gross. You probably won't have taste buds now, for a couple days. Quickly, what makes Real quickly, we only have 30 seconds left in this segment, but what makes your place different than a larger brewery? We have some kegs over here. You know, how much do you guys produce? So what makes us different is we'll make two half kegs off of this system, whereas other places make larger. So uh, we're looking at it in like a seven barrel system later this year, which would then be 14 kegs. So again, we're on a very small scale, almost a nano brewery size. All right. We'll be back to the Nano Brewery in just a little bit. We're going to check out the fermenting process next. So stick with us. There was just a report from the governor's office about the number mm -hmm. of craft and microbreweries that have just exploded in this uh, state. Uh, from 2011, I think the number was, oh, goodness, I know that it was like 40 or something in 2011, and now it's in the hundreds. Yeah.
uh, you know, well, well over 100 yeah, in I, 2013. I, I follow the Finger Lakes Beer Trail on Twitter. They're yeah. awesome if you want to do that. Yeah. That helps guide you. So if you're down in the Finger Lakes and maybe you're not a wine person. There you go. Or you want to complement your wine tasting with beer tasting. Yeah. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're very fortunate because the more the merrier, I suppose. Beer tourism. How about that? Yeah. So I know we'll, people do that. Yeah, we'll hear more from Hannah as we go forward. A beautiful union over on Union.